I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original five fingers of death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Um, right, are we good to go? You've got your dosed up on caffeine and... Uh... I've got my coffee with me. Yeah, oh, good stuff. Mm. Right, are we, uh, we, we ready? You good to go? Green light, red light? Yeah. Yep. Are we rehearsed this? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsal? What are you talking about? Come mm. on. We're, we're not that good. Oh, God. Well, okay, guys, welcome to another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast uh, with me, James Still, and... Uh, the notorious Steve Newby in Canada. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, yeah, oh. you're, you're pretty much you're right about the notorious, and you're the black sheep of the family. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, no you one, wouldn't have it any other way, would you? No one ever agreed with me. No, no, not bitter, are you? No. <laughs> um, we are on unlucky for some pod thirteen. Mm. So, what you've been up to since I last spoke to you? Now, and it genuinely has been a couple of days. Normally we sort of speak every other day, don't we? But I haven't spoke to you for a while. No, I've been uh, doing my training um, and my, my, you know, my new job training as well. So yeah, got to get that sorted. Um, yeah, so going to be a uh, yeah upstanding citizen eventually. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. Uh, it's, yeah, we're just everyone's off work now. It's just so hard to. Uh, how to get out well yeah. i mean we can go walks and everything it's not too bad but i went down the um down the park today next to the lake and we did a little bit of videoing of the some stick stuff because uh, we had some inquiries about that some questions about the stick yeah uh, i sent her a video okay you can't mention so, names uh well it's just a, a single name in it it's not going to hurt well i'm just saying we you know we've got to protect oh. people's anonymity here Oh, okay. Yeah, so, that's true. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that was exactly a, a giveaway, though. Well, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's a foghorn moment. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. all right, then. Is that... Well, I d listen, I, uh, I'd i love to be able to shout people out, but we gotta, we got we to gotta make sure uh, no one feels uh, awkward about asking us questions, because I kind of think that if you like if you're training you know with your instructor or whatever it's kind of a bit you know it, it, you might feel a bit funny about asking other people their opinions on it but yeah you know that's true because people often think you know um it's it's hard to say really but they they do think that they should be um listening to they, they kind of have a perception of of who people are and and sort of respect for people uh their standing rather than considering you know the knowledge and the logic mm. in some questions so it, it's it i think it's good to ask questions I, I i i always ask questions and i i expect everybody to ask me i expect people to grill me to find out you know what i'm talking about oh yeah usually they have to though don't they <laughs> what the hell are you what do you think it's like trying to get blood out of a stone <laughs> yeah yeah. I was, uh, what have I been up to? I was doing the sword set the other day and nearly sliced my finger off. Like a mm. prize yeah. idiot. I, uh, you know when you press down on top of the sword? Yeah. Uh, I Normally I'm quite, I'm quite like slick with getting my hand out of the way, you know, covering the centre and whatnot. But this time, oh, the little, my, my index finger got in the way, got a bit of a slice. And it would I think not it stop should, bleeding. Yeah, I think it's important to say that we, we do have a, a tendency to train with good weapons well, yeah. and you know and that, that's that's the thing a lot of people just do not do is train with 
weapons that are actually useful in the field, mm. if you like. Yeah, oh, 100%, so. 100%. Um, so, you kind of alluded to it. We've had some questions this week. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll basically deal with those first. Later on, we're going to talk about uh, Fei Lung Ji, the fifth set in, in Lao. Um, but, oh, I was going to say, you know, we've had some dislikes on our YouTube vids. Well, of course. What do you some, expect? Hey, the one with you doing the first set, some people didn't yeah. like it. No. <laughs> but they they just put a thumbs down because I've switched off yeah. comments. I'm not like, I wouldn't yeah. answer comments anyway. And the thing is with the comments on YouTube, it's just trolls, yeah. isn't it? You know, yeah. um, if you've got a question, guys, by all means, reach us through Facebook, you know, Messenger, um, email Steve, whatever. You can find the emails on uh, on the oh, website. Yeah, they, can always, they can always question me, um, you know, personally if they want to. Yeah, and, sure. and you know where it would be a really good thing is they sent a video and showed me how they did it. Absolutely. Guys, as, uh, in, 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 in today's world, send a video just so we know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Because often, just like on. us do, we find it hard to describe, you know, uh, in words and talk about it yeah, yeah. on the podcast. No, but anything that's put on video, and this is the one thing, I've said this before on podcast, uh, I don't like doing videos because people judge you for the exact thing that you do that day Mm -hmm. and you know you do it that day the next day or even the next time you may do it slightly differently you may have a different perception of it because there's lots of different reasons to do it and uh, obviously some people have different ideas and different reasons to do it but if they do um, you know show us yeah by all means I'd love to learn off you yeah absolutely. You, you tell me yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, right, should we should we press on? So, the first question, okay, and we'll 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 go from the uh, question about the sticks. All right, okay. This person writes in and says, uh, "Hi, Steve. The eyebrow pole. Are you saying that the two man stick for brown and second degree, the weapon itself, we all basically purchase a six foot bow staff." should technically be personalized to the length of the practitioner i'm five foot three and feeding the staff always leaves about a foot out the end unless i actively engage in jumping the staff through my grip and she goes on to say not ideal i know okay so that's the first question steve so basically you know the length of the stick it's got it's got to uh, be yeah. personalized to you so go ahead uh-huh yeah, well, I, I have answered this uh, this um, inquirer, yeah, and uh, I did a little demonstration for them. And basically, I I, I remember going to a grading once, and um, the guy standing at the door with his uh, pretty much a you know shirt tie, everything, his badge, and all that kind of thing. It wasn't on the panel. Right. He was just letting people in and out the door. Right. And uh, my guys turned up and they all had poles, you know, of varying sizes according to their height. Mm-hmm. And uh, he goes, uh, your, your poles are too short. And I, I says, uh, why is that then? He says, oh, they should be six foot long. And I went, you know, they're called eye, eyebrow poles for a reason. <laughs> did, did, right? Was that one of no. them... Uh like moments that didn't go down very well for you <laughs> it, it, it's, it's it's one of them moments that that kind of give me the reputation of being a black sheep yeah um because i am true to the um technical spirit of martial arts as opposed to um conforming to some kind of religious sect right and uh, and so it's really important to understand that it's got a name. It's an eyebrow pole. Yeah. Uh, other people will call it a slippery pole, and that's how they kind of dodge the the, the length kind of thing because they say, "Ah, oh, yeah, but you slip it through your hands." Well, yeah, you can slip it through your hands, and uh, you can slip it out the end of your hands as well. Mm. But the thing is, let's just look at the slipping for a second. If you're slipping it without maintaining control of it with one hand then you can't rotate it now when i say rotate i mean rotate on its axis i don't i in other words twisting twisting it in your hand right not not rotating it as in swinging it from end to end yeah um, or anywhere for that just just as a point of reference guys on our youtube channel sdn martial arts uh, we've got a video and i'm just talking about 
um, the rotation, what Steve is talking about there. I'm going to put brief... thumbs down, I am. I'm going to yeah, put oh, thumbs yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. On a very <laughs> brief video. <laughs> on a very brief video. So if, you, if you're unsure what we mean by the rotation, that's what we're talking about. But yeah, we will, we will do uh, We will do a, bit, a yeah. bigger video, yeah. a longer video. I tried today, as I said, but yeah. the, the sound wasn't good. Yeah. And, you know, too much wind. We're going to get ourselves one of those big mics that, that cut out the sound sure, of the wind. Because sure. when you're standing by the lake, you know, you can imagine there's oh, quite a lot of wind. It must be hell. It must be hell. Standing by an 85 mile long lake. Yeah, yeah. That's it. But guys, if you do go on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to us. That'd be a massive, uh, massive favour to yeah. us. We'd appreciate that. Anyway, go on. Yep. We're talking about the rotation. Okay. So basically, it's an eyebrow pole. It has a length, uh, the width of your grip, uh, being able to hold on to it and touch the ends. When you put that stick on the floor, the other end should reach your eyebrow and that's as high as it needs to go right. and that gives you a complete control of that stick now um, the issue was okay uh, this this inquirer has got to slide it slide it through their hands in order to achieve each end using yeah. each end problem you've got there of course you haven't got so much control over it and if you're sliding it it's it's not really going in the direction you want it to um, you don't need to slide it because if it's your size and it, it's your weapon then what tends to happen is you can use both ends right to the maximum and it is the tip of the stick that is obviously the most powerful right. now yeah you can argue that a big guy is going to have a bigger stick so therefore that's not fair well yeah. then I would suggest that you better start growing longer arms then yeah. because you've got shorter arms as well and you're still going to fight bigger people so it's quite obvious that your arms suit you other otherwise you'd be running around like a gibbon <laughs> and relax. you're able to hit people and and i would argue that if you watch um uh, give me a name sharon gill there's yeah. a good one yeah if you watch Sharon Gill sparring, she's knee eye to a grasshopper. She does a lot of fighting with Sean Vieira because they work together. And um, they did a little demonstration at the Nationals 2018, was it? You were showing me the I other day. So. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they did a little demonstration of fighting. She gets inside him. She, she strikes at him. She reaches him. No problem doesn't just use a leg she uses her hands she counters she, she uh, sets him up all sorts of things that's basically just using her short stature to fight a taller guy and in with a stick you get inside with a stick with a guy with a six foot or a seven foot pole or whatever you get inside with a you know five foot three pole and you are going to be able to block it and then be able to strike at him the closest target is his fingers you take those fingers out you, you you take the pole out and even then once you're inside the rest of the pole it is a, a completely irrelevant how long that pole is yeah because once you're inside it it don't matter it can't bend and come back on you but, but i mean if you are if you are of short stature and like this inquirer you know five foot three and you're with a six foot pole because it's a double-ended pole you know that implies you are um changing you know the use of either end which means you've got to yeah, turn right. it around and so what's yeah. to stop you from hitting it on the floor you know well exactly and, yeah and, she... and, and so you're at more disadvantage <laughs> yeah with it's, and it's too big yeah yeah it's too big it's what, too big for them when you mentioned earlier on you said you don't have as much control with a longer stick what exactly did you mean by that well it, i meant that if she was trying to slide it through uh hands mm. from end to end and not having a, a one-handed grip on it as the other hand slid because yeah. that's what tends to happen then of course anyone can take control of that stick while it's sliding through your hands you haven't got such a tight grip i mean it really what offends me most is when people are doing an upper block with it you know across the head yeah. with it holding it with both hands and then some instructors go oh if you just grip it with your fingers so that your, your fingers aren't over the top of the pole mm. he can't hit your fingers well he's not going to aim for them if they're not there is he yeah. he's going to and if he hits the pole it'll just bounce straight out your hand that was that was exactly one of the points i was going to say to you how many times have you seen that 
and it yeah. jumps out. It's just like well, it, it bounces out, yeah, yeah, because you're not gripping it, you're not holding yeah. it properly. Yeah. Let's face it: if he's aiming for your fingers, move your damn fingers. Yeah. You know, be aware what's happening with the with the with the fight. You know, with, yeah. with a stick. The other thing is, of course, when you're left with that extended. Uh, the piece that you can't use one end you can use it when you're in a in a an orthodox position uh, holding the the stick the, the stick out um, in front of you with your left hand at the the base okay and you're using the other end to strike yeah. that's fine when you transfer it round around your body and you try to reach for that other end okay with your right hand trying to pull it round so that you can then hit with the opposite side and your left hand is now out yeah. you'll find that you've got a maybe between a four inch to a foot long addition to your pole that you can't use it's it's useless to you anyway yeah. so there's no point in having it but what it is useful for is that the other person if he can get hold of your weapon can use that four inches even two inches to to a foot long of pole to be able to wrap that stick around your wrist that you're when you're holding it yeah. and use it as a lever to completely um, disarm you. Yeah. So and he can do that in any direction, in either direction rotationally. Sure. So that makes it very difficult for you. Whereas if you was holding the end of the stick both times, whether right-handed, left-handed, when you're doing the strike, either with the one end or the other, and you you are able to contain that pole and hold it i'll call it a stick so yeah. for continuity yeah. then um you're he's not going to be able to get it out of you he, he can't get it out because you can move that wrist in any direction you want without being um caught by the uh, the remaining stick because sure. there is no remaining yeah so you're using the whole thing and it's your weapon and it's your height and that's how you need to utilize a, a pole yeah. for use for sure, for sure. Um, and yeah. if we're talking about the types of poles people use, I mean, you know, you can get the hardwood poles. I mean, yeah. I, I always, I love the waxwood flexible ones. Yes, I they're the they best. I think the best because yeah, because they're they're live. You yes. know what I mean by that? They've got a live grain, which means they are a lot stronger. I mean, uh, we used to take pride, <laughs> call it pride if you like, because it costs people money. Um, when we were in Scotland, we used to do the stick forms over and over and over. You used to get maybe up to three sticks broken, right? right? And that's because people would whack them hard. But yeah. they were these kind of what they call Japanese oak, which really is probably just varnished pine. Yeah. I don't know, because they were heavy, mm -hmm. fair enough. They were heavy poles, but they, they were dead. It was dead wood. Yeah. So they didn't really have a great grain. Uh, they weren't they weren't like springy or anything. Yeah. It's a good idea to have one that that has some give in it. it it's kind so of those, those a, wax ones are good. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of acts as a shock absorber, I think. In, yeah, in, in yeah, some yeah. Way. Oh um, yeah, springiness is important. Yeah, uh, I, I I can I can elaborate if you want about yeah. the rotation yeah. as well because sure. I, I think one of the things people misunderstand they will miss that if they're sliding it up and down their hands without controlling it yeah. because that one hand is able to rotate it and I as I said in a in a circular motion not the whole the pole but I'm talking about in it through its length through in its a axis, rotation if you like yeah the, yeah the central axis of the entire pole yeah yeah the right around. through yeah. yeah you're twist you're twisting it like you were uh, twisting a pen um yeah. uh i don't know yeah i, no, I think people it. know what we mean yeah yeah and the rotation is, is is has three at least three different benefits uh firstly the rotation increases the energy at the end okay throughout the pole secondly it stops the pole from being uh, when you strike something hard like if you hit their stick it it helps to to prevent the energy from snapping the pole well, because too much energy it, in one area yeah, it, it dissipates yeah yeah yep, it dissipates the energy and thirdly if someone were to grab it and you can rotate it then it makes it very difficult for them to hold it in the same way yeah. same as if someone grabs your wrist we were talking about the other week yeah, yeah. if someone grabs your wrist and you rotate your wrist they, they end up in an awkward position and so you do the same thing with your stick yeah you rotate it yeah. and if you rotate it like that then it makes it very difficult them to hold well, and well, you can also use it as a lock then well, yeah i mean going back to the you, you just mentioned the wrist there in relation to the to the pole i mean when someone grabs your wrist 
you look at that bone in the arm I can't remember what it's bloody called now what is it called but you rotate that bone there is nothing for someone to actively grab onto in terms of to hold on yeah. and prevent you from a rotating from a rotation yeah. so you know you know it's same in the stick as well you know if someone you know tries to rotate the the, uh, the stick you know mm -hmm. um you can't resist that in a way but you know um right what i was going to say range of the stick when you're practicing the stick sets so this is important because a lot of people are too close yeah yeah hello? can you hear me hello yeah Just, yeah, hello. yeah yeah <laughs> a lot of people are too close i'll get worried then <laughs> look no, it's because i was i was opening my arrow <laughs> oh hey gotta have the gotta have the chalky a lot of people train it too close but equally a lot of people train the stick set and you i see it all the time and they're not even reaching each other to hit yeah and yeah. that is a big you've, you, the the very edge the head of the pole is meant to you know reach the head of the the yeah. target okay and, and this is an interesting point because a lot of people say a downward strike okay in actual fact there is there's not a single downward strike in well let's talk about well any of the forms but particularly we're talking about the the double-headed pole or the, the the slippery pole or the the uh, rat uh, sorry not the rat top but the um Eyebrow Jesus pole. Christ, eyebrow pole. Yeah, there just, you go. Just call it that's, a stick. That's, that's <laughs> we'll be here stick. all night. I'll go back to that. Yeah, and they they say, oh, downward thrust. Uh, you, I think people are, ought to uh, be aware that there is no downward thrust, because um, if you did, you'd be smacking yourself in the grind, okay, or in the stomach or something. So in effect, it's from your waist, just like a punch. You're pulling the one hand back to your waist throwing the other hand out guiding the stick so the one is for power by pulling it back just like the you do with a punch and the other one is for guidance is, is yeah. for direction yeah. when you're pushing it out so you're doing the two together which increases the energy you're rotating it with your right hand if it's a forward right hand strike and uh, you're ending up with a, a much more powerful pole yeah. so okay or stick so what you're saying is you're pushing down on one end and pulling up the other and in the middle yeah. of the stick uh, well re your right hand almost acts as like a fulcrum and yeah it's the point, gu yeah yeah but yeah. it's also guiding the stick it's towards the target, yeah that's the one that yeah that's the one that uh is guiding the direction of the pole yeah. the left hand is not lazy it's the one pulling back but it's pulling back to the waist which means it's not going directly down okay no. it's going across and it's better to go across because rather than try to just aim down on top of the head you're actually trying to hit the side of the head yeah. the ear the neck the shoulder the even the you know right on the shoulder you and have, so on your, down your, that direction your, the amount of targets does open up considerably when you're yep. striking downward uh, yep. sorry downward at an angle as it's also difficult to, yep. it's also difficult to escape yes much more difficult it's the same with the sword it's, if you're cutting yeah. a diagonally with a sword rather than across or yeah. down of course it's far more difficult to yeah. avoid yeah so you've got more targets well yeah look at in competition fighting an axe kick for example you've got a yeah. you know what can you do other than move out the way uh, i, I yeah. understand there are different options but essentially yeah. you know most people are going to move back aren't they because they don't yeah. want to avoid they want to avoid uh, well they um, can well, yeah they can move sideways yeah, if it's coming I, straight down i, I understand know, that i was just using the axe all right this is what mm. it's like people do you see what i mean you say one thing and it's like <laughs> no no <laughs> i know i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry um god damn where am i now um reaching what were we saying about reaching yeah were you going to make a point about you've got to reach people is that what you were going to say yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You you have got to be you you've got to be you know the tip towards their head or mm. whatever target. Yeah. So, in effect, um, yeah, you're right in saying a lot of people um, tend to be you know too close together when they're doing it. They're not using the whole stick, so that they actually even if the stick is their size, mm. they'll tend to hold it back a little bit and end yeah. up with a bit at the end at the back end. Yeah. Um, and that's usually because of the place they train in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we all know that we we all get a point where oh we can't really train very well in this hall, so we'll get a bit closer. Yeah, sure. And um, it's unfortunately uh, 
that's something that we can't do a great deal about unless we change halls, unless we, you know, there's different directions and so yeah. on. It depends on the type of form you've got. Yeah, sure. And, you know, sticks do take up a lot of space, so oh, yeah. you've, got to be, you've got to be aware that wherever you train. And, it's, and, you know, a lot of the time the sticks are left to higher grades is simply because, you know, when, you, when you're training, you don't want beginners around walking past you not expecting it. It's mm. like throwing a sword around. You do not want to have kids in your class you don't want to have beginners in your class just walking along not recognizing the danger yeah, of that sure. sword as you spin around yeah, yeah. and um <laughs> to take the red off <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah. right. um i just want to briefly then we'll finish up i just want to talk about with the the stick and, and i appreciate guys there's, there's a lot we can sort of talk about i want to talk about the use of the body with uh, the stick because you yeah. see a lot of people um when they're they're attacking it's ticking in Quanjun, the first uh, dual man set mm -hmm. they're overextending the stick it's not close to their body i appreciate because they've got a light stick yeah right yeah they, they're not used to a, a, a heavy pole so they tend to they get you know maybe even used to it and they tend to you know sort of bring it down and, and you can do that with a spear yeah, because you don't have to rely on the end of the the, the the spear to be, you know, solid and and actually using the the energy of the spear. It's actually it's sharp. Yeah, and it's pointy, and and it's you know so it's and it's whippy. Yeah, so it's a totally different weapon. But um, people tend to maybe interpret that and they see that and they go, oh right, well I can ex overextend my sti stick. Or they've got a lighter stick and they tend to overextend it because of that. No, you need it. it, it does come back to your waist. And if you are transferring it, the best thing to do, including particularly when you're blocking, is you need to rotate it around your body as well. Yes. Keep it tight to your body, uh, at the, in the middle of the stick. Yeah. You know, the worst thing I see, of course, is people doing Robin Hood where they're, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. trying to use a, a two-foot stick. It's a, it's, a, it's a long pole, and then they try to use it as a, a, like yeah. a two-foot either end, which is pointless. Yeah. Um, the, the first stick set, would you, you know, would you, it's quite a, it's quite a good introduction to it isn't it the, yeah the, uh, it's, it's just a basic training form yeah um taking nothing away from it for people who are learning that now and it must be you know it's sometimes quite difficult for people to learn yeah. those things sure. um but yeah it, it's it, it has its its place and it is good and don't forget to concentrate on your steps as well and um uh, the way and use of the body when you're you know moving the stick because you've got a lot more energy in it then as well yeah but yeah, people do tend to try to throw it all over the place, and it should be a part of you. And so, yeah, keep it keep it useful to you. But the the, the thing about sticks is is people do, as I said, overextend them. Um, they so they throw them about, and 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 really going back to that uh, the the inquirer with the you know five foot three inquirer, um, you know they're going to go well. You know, okay, he's got a six foot pole, but where where are you thinking of hitting him? Because the closest target is his fingers. You take his fingers off his stick, he ain't gonna have a pole anyway. So what you got to worry about? So that's all you're doing is you're just you're you're covering and you're just looking for those fingers. Yeah. You know that's that's the first thing, and then you know the next closest thing to his fingers and his elbows or his knees. So you know. Yeah don't worry about getting in there and try and smack him on the head because it won't matter if he's got no pole yeah absolutely right yeah so keep it honest guys um steve we're gonna move on we got another question yeah um, that's great right then well so, i'm glad that we're getting technical yeah. now because people have asked us to get more yeah. technical and less less frivolous yeah but we love so. frivolous oh we do we do don't take it yeah. seriously just have fun yeah <laughs> but be I, I want people, people to, yeah i want people to ask questions yeah. but you know I, if people disagree then bloody give me your argument what's the what what's the point that's like let's oh it's like donald trump in it it's like saying i don't agree i don't like your question yeah. that's it right. you know he doesn't he doesn't rebuff he doesn't he doesn't give any kind of explanation back so but then i'm getting political but it's the same with anything you know yeah. if someone asks a question in politics or anywhere else someone's going to give an answer yeah. with reason it's Absolutely going to be a reasonable right. yeah. answer yeah yeah um right moving on next question 
Yeah. Oh, right. So, <clears throat> um, this is a bit of a uh, out, outside the box question. Um, it says, right. Hi, Steve. See, hi. Me, you know, hi, Steve. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. I, this, I'm the comedy psychic. I don't expect to get anything, you know. Who am I? Well, they I usually speak. send them to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. It does say. It says, <laughs> "Hi, James." <laughs> oh, I'm trying okay. to make it sound important, man. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've read of the dragon finger in Shaolin styles. <laughs> oh, you started laughing. Right, right, right. Listen. No, I know. No, 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 I don't. Listen. Yeah, you've got to listen to the question. It's a legitimate question. It's a legitimate I am not question. laughing at the guy that wrote it. I'm laughing at the name. The name, right. Okay, well, hang on. Yeah. Okay, let me read it out first. Do you think you could just maybe stuff another arrow in your mouth to stop you from laughing? Oh, hang, hang on. <sighs> right. I've read of the dragon finger in Shaolin styles. Basically, a leopard paw, but with the index finger extended and pointing up. And he goes on to say, like the sixth or seventh moves in Tiger Crane. If Hungar use it, so he's talking about iron wire palm here. If Hungar use it, and we have a set based around the dragon's finger movements, why does it not appear in Lao? And also, what is its use and application? Okay, As it's linked to the dragon, is it to do with chi and energy? Okay, and he goes on to say, which is quite nice, we'll keep recommending the podcast to the people in my club. Thanks for putting it out there. I've also, as an, I've also thought maybe you or Steve could put together a further reading type lift list for people who are interested, maybe some relevant books plus some favorites, just a thought. Okay, and uh, again, guys, if you send us a question, we will not use your name unless you specify. Okay, so we'll keep it, uh, we'll keep it under the radar, man. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so. Dragon finger, basically, is iron wire okay. palm is talking about. Um, yep, I, I'm, I'm just going to answer that really quickly because I think it's a great question, and uh, I mean, what makes me laugh is, of course, the way it is, you know, sort of referred to in so many different ways with uh, from, by so many different people. So where he's read it, obviously, someone's called the iron wire palm. They've called it a dragon. Uh, Fist or whatever. Yeah, but it's no, it's no different than me calling it iron wire palm. That sounds bloody ridiculous. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, well, iron wire palm refers to your sin, your your tendons. If you pull your fingers back with your your finger out, your single finger out, you can have more than one finger out. You can yeah. have different fingers out. But if you pull it, pull your hands really as far back as you can with those fingers, you'll see all the tendons of your fingers are sticking out of your, your, the back of your hand and that's what it refers to is iron wires right. okay the iron wire palm so but it, the, the question's been answered already by the guy because he's, he's got some some a good idea there and simply the fact that we don't use it in our phalong chi in finger movements of the dragon because the finger movements of the dragon is about using techniques that work Okay, not about doing necessary exercises. So you can do that as an exercise. Uh, and if you look at Hongar sets where they, a majority of it is repeated exercise, you'll, you'll, you'll get that because they're trying to build power, power, power. Okay, right. so it's a little bit more of a power-based kind of ener energetic style in that sense. Um, but Laogar tends to be about the fighting aspect. So it, it has few exercises and far more uh, okay. movements in it. Right. So we don't we don't do it in it necessarily. But I'm going to tell you off because you you yeah. I should have a buzzer that says we only do it we just do it as an exercise. You sh well you know I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to counter that my yeah, own question that's fine. because it's not in Phelan Chi, but you can say if you want to use it that way. It is in Far uh, Kune. It is in Far Kune, although I, you know it, it's it's a contentious point with that. You're talking. Well, that's about, why I said if you want to use it that way. Yeah, but 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 really, whether or not you've got you know your iron wire palm, we'll call it. You know, actually, I like yeah. dragon finger. I'm going to call it dragon finger from now on. That's my oh, new thing. Okay. Whether you want to do dragon finger or just extend all the fingers in one hand, does it yeah. detract? Does it make the technique any different? Doesn't. No, it doesn't, and and that's why in finger movements of uh, not finger movements of the dragon, but in Far Kune, okay, in Flower Fist, the fourth set, 
Uh, it's called the flower hides in the sleeve and as you withdraw it you uh, some people would do it with two fingers some people would do it with that single finger and because it does make it tight the single finger makes yeah. it tight but the other but the reason you keep the single finger open is because you can then utilize it to grab so you're not just closing them all like a leopard's paw upside down yeah. and then having to move the finger in order to grab you're literally pulling it backwards uh, as a block as it would be as a diversion or a parry and then you're able to grip whatever you've parried with that finger which is why the finger is left open when you do it yeah. as a flower hides in a sleeve yeah. some people as they say will do it with two fingers and some people might just do it with a complete open hand but it's not really referred to as the iron wire palm but in effect you could say that it's exactly the so same thing what we're talking about guys is the part in farcoon after the opening the uppercut and the leopard's paw you're going to pivot 90 degrees aren't you and then yeah. from a fighting stance almost you're going to step and punch almost uh, quite a long technique but the it's right only fist... it's own yeah it's only when you go down and come up and then strike yeah. and then you go down and come up and then strike that's the only two, two times you need to do it but flower height right okay but the flower, flower hides in the sleeve is from the long uh gung bow stance punch. isn't it and, yeah you know so but you're when, yeah, withdrawing you that up. hand yeah but you're yeah. you're mentioning as well when you go down into the butterfly stance uh yeah, yeah. You, you go down you come uh you come up and you punch well that could be a fist to be honest yeah see it's yeah. it's you know but so here's something i want to put to you steve right now and if yeah. i'm way out off base um i'll edit this out yeah so okay. if you're listening to this he's agreed with me viewers now <laughs> if like take the basic walk and punch as an exercise right you're 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 walking down you're drilling the punches down the room okay basic walk and flat punch if you take that fist and you make a phoenix eye with that with the fist but you're still doing the basic walk and punch has the technique changed i would argue no the only thing that has changed is the target in which you could envisage hitting but look at the mm -hmm. mechanics of the punch it's still exactly the same so because it's now called a phoenix eye fist do you sort of um put onto it some sort of mysticism or it's still a punch does that make yeah. sense steve does do you agree with yeah. that yeah yeah um i was still you know you know while you were saying that i was going through fuck you <laughs> oh for god's sake but yeah all right so you weren't listening then is that what you're saying um but, no basically there's a, the, the the thing i know i was thinking that you know when people come up from the sitting down position because we were talking about vacuum last week yeah. and they come up from the sitting position and they put their hand out ready to punch okay there are that i was just looking at that and going you know some people might do that as an iron wire palm yeah i've seen it um and, and i like that but i'm not suggesting I mean, it all totally depends on what you're doing it for because if you if you need to protect yourself then an arm wire palm isn't a great idea because you've got all your fingers closed if except for the one and, right so i was saying this but if you're doing it just as a pose yeah. then then yeah great it looks nice yeah That's well fine. i was i was just saying to uh my friend uh on the, on on the phone earlier on i was saying listen if you're going to strike someone with a, a, a dragon finger it's called a dragon finger by the way if you're going to yeah. strike someone with that you've got all your fingers curled up you're gonna you're gonna crush your fingers you're gonna hurt yourself you know it's gonna hurt you gotta make a choice you got one finger sticking out the others i mean okay people do poke in the eye with one finger or whatever yeah but unity uh, is maybe, strength unity yeah. is strength why use one when you could use two well you can wrap the one around the other yeah, yeah. you wrap the one around the other like you were wishing yeah that's that? that's the best way to do it but yeah. some people do do single fingers it's up yeah. to them no no I, you know if you if you train it by all means go yeah. for it well i always i have i have one question the people when they train <laughs> you know if you can do press-ups on your little finger and only on your little finger where would you hit someone and people go oh uh, the eye uh, the throat and i'd say anywhere you bloody well want to yeah because yeah. if you can do press-ups on your finger you know on your little finger then you are doing well yeah. sunshine yeah and you're going to be able to hit anybody anywhere yeah that's so it. come back okay. um going back to goes on to sort of says what are some applications of it now out you know 
are you talking about you know the single finger are you talking about the movement within the arm i mean you know so it's a, it's quite an expansive thing i think to start suggesting applications on a podcast that's going to be something for a video but in yeah, the that's broad right. strokes steve mm -hmm. could you just you know elaborate on what applications it could be the, the, well it this is just you're just pushing out and developing and that's why it's called iron wire palm as far as i'm concerned there's no real application with that unless you're kind of they do do it to strike outwards like a chop which can be done like a chop mm -hmm. you know so in effect you don't need to have your iron wire palm out you can have all the fingers out because as soon as you close the fingers you are going to limit the its use but as i just suggested the best way to see the iron wire palm or dragons finger. whatever you want to call it finger sorry in um in lao is in when you come up from the the going down in Farcoon because then you can you can you don't have to have it out there you can still have your hand palm out as if you were ready to fight with your palm out and your punch ready and when you do the punch and you withdraw that hand you can then close all those fingers and you can leave that one out which is strengthening your uh, the position of your hand as it parries because it's like an upside down parry and then because that finger is out you can then close it on the wrist that you're parrying yeah, yeah. with the thumb and then it becomes either a, a grip or it can become you know pressing on yeah. the, the wrist yeah. uh you know with the I, thumb and so I on. a good way to sort of say you know explain really what you mean is that you know lao is an open hand style guys right you know we don't close the fists in order to open them in order to grab yeah they start off open-handed right it's so yeah. you know it's the, the fighting stance for example right and there are many reasons why there's a fighting stance but there's a reason why we don't have our fist closed to start with because it's mm -hmm. uneconomical it doesn't confirm form to the, the to the principle of speed to for me to open my hand to grab again does that make sense that's right? yeah that's right so that's you know but keeping the one finger open while the others are closed and making the technique tighter mm -hmm then obviously strengthens your yeah. body your your forearm and so on and your hand oh, yeah. but the finger is still useful so that that's where that dragon finger if you mm. want can be then utilized to be a grip yeah. but as far as the hungar sit is concerned it's repeated three times yeah. right pulling back pushing out pulling back pushing out and so on and you know the the dragon finger per se for that particular exercise doesn't really have any potential yeah. use more than a normal open hand would have yeah. the only thing you're doing there is building up your forearms yeah. and you know we, sort of, i it's think a when, you're, when you're looking at these different um uh, hand shapes should we say whether it's a closed fist a leopard paw single knuckle extended fingers dark fingers you know whatever there's there's a there's a plethora of techniques that you can look at yeah i think there comes a point when where you know you're over over complicating what could essentially be very simple techniques in it and the only reason uh, not the only reason but one of the reasons is because of these um the, these quite elaborate names and, and the images and whatnot it conjures up in it you know so mm -hmm. i think people sometimes miss the point of the simplicity of something because it's called whether flower hides in the sleeve dragon finger or whatever um yeah. I, I that's just my opinion i don't know uh, how you feel about that there's Steve. only so many ways you can move your hand right uh, but there are several reasons you do so yeah you know i mean you're looking for a smaller area to impact so yeah. you know penetration yeah. you're looking for a larger area to impact like a fist so you you know rather than a phoenix eye because like a phoenix punch uh, will have a much smaller area yeah. the edge of the palm would have a smaller area the fingers will have a smaller area you know and so on but then you have a big fist will have a, a larger area you'll have a palm which have a larger area so these are in different impacts but then you also have the the you know within a form you might have hand positions which are there to build strength uh, as in the hungar one um you know or to retain strength while you're doing something with a very awkward position yeah. when you're doing it with an awkward position you understand it, it it means you can do it from one position to another without worrying too much about the fact that your hand is in an awkward position in other words you don't have to sort of pause to change that 
the method of the hand yep. and and you're just going straight into the next technique because you can utilize the hand in a, in a variety of different ways yeah. i mean take a boxer for instance and as you just mentioned we don't close our hand to open it again so um a good example is say karate where they'll stand there pretty much most of the time uh with fists and i'm not suggesting it's all the time but they tend to have an awful lot of fists kind of stances and in in doing so that completely reduces their, their the speed ability to um you know grab someone because you can't grab someone with a closed fist if you have your hand open yeah. oh, let, let's look at it this way okay i know we were designed to jump from tree to tree and immediately we would be able to grip that tree to continue to go from branch to branch okay now i don't remember doing it myself <laughs> but apparently that's what we were designed for therefore closing the hand is far stronger than opening it so if you have got to try to open your hand to grip someone and you're stuck against their body it's going to be very difficult to utilize your hand open without you know putting it into a very precarious situation whereas you try to open it and you might end up with a bent wrist you might end up you know with the the wrist being really awkward and being damaged yeah. so it's better to be aware of those hands and fingers open because people will say oh yeah but if they see your fingers they're targets that's true that's why you don't keep your fighting stance in one position that's why you move around yeah. um you know that's why you should never stand there at the <laughs> beginning of a fight at a bus stop oh, and go hi ya with I your did. fingers out do, do you know like when, I, when i first uh, when i first started training with you about like three or four months after i was walking down the road and these two like chaps they uh, <laughs> sort of they, they got a bit leery with me and in a busy road i was just stood there in a fighting stance shitting like a shake shaking like a shitting dog i was like oh, come on man let's go you know i was like you know getting psyched up but if anyone was driving by i was like what the hell is he doing i was like you know i didn't know what i was doing i just thought put up a fighting stance but oh, i was funny but uh, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely well yeah as as we've already discussed in videos and so on yeah. there's you, there's no point in making a fighting stance until you're actually in the fight. That's what it's for. Yeah. It's meant to defend you. Uh, guys, we got another, we got video about that as well. <laughs> yeah. Go on, We've YouTube. really got to get some of these videos in order. Yeah, we? we should. We should. We should. We'll redo them. We'll make them better. But uh, we're just uh, we're just getting used to the old uh, video. But, but what I did, yeah. Well, what I did with this uh, inquiry about the stick is I just went out with my cup of tea in the garden yeah and i um i just spoke to them on on the video with a stick i just said this is what you do i'd much rather do that on a yeah. video yeah but then and i wasn't I've... dressed up i didn't didn't pretend no pretense i didn't stick a belt on and a and a t-shirt and whatever i just went out in me in me you know me yeah. jumper and me well, me work clothes as long as it wasn't your jocks that's all right uh, no nah, no i no. <laughs> i wasn't in that much jokes, of a rush mate. i'll see me jokes mate um <laughs> right so yeah guys listen if you, by all means send us video questions we would love that because yeah, just what they gotta do they just you yeah know, put it if, on a if not talk to us on your on your damn phone yeah. and stick it on messenger or or email it or yeah. whatever but guys we don't care any question is a good question whether it's video text or whatever um mm -hmm. but just you know please you know if you do it if you go send us a messenger like our facebook and uh, subscribe yeah. and all the rest of it um right <laughs> you'll get these plugs in steve because everyone does it and like you know and the thing is yeah, you know yeah. anyway you know there's a guy in Hereford who's just you know teaching a bastardized version of lao and he's you know he's, he's got quite a big presence on social media and it's a pain in the ass. he's got all these likes and i've got nothing you know but anyway. ex-student ex-student -ex yeah well you know anyway anyway I won't go there we've got another question final question mm. okay um again from uh a um so says, i know them <laughs> a -nom. i was gonna do like you know from make up those funny like mike roch and uh <laughs> you know, stuff like that but i thought no nah. anyway no people won't believe you yeah. then <laughs> uh, uh, right so it goes it says hi steve I'm a white sash and I went to another club for extra training when our class was closed the one week. I was put in with some guys that had hardly been that had only been training for a few weeks. We were doing hand block number one. 
when the black sash came over to show us i could see what he was teaching was different and missing some technical bits like picking mm. up with the wrist etc that that was different to my own that was different to what my own instructor had shown me what mm -hmm. would be your advice i know i'm only a white sash but do you speak up and say something or stay quiet so what would what would be your advice you know, oh, keep the God, peace I, bite your lip um i mean God, well the worst thing. thing you can say is we don't do it that way <laughs> right that's the worst thing you can say however just do it the way that you feel is right and if he questions it he's gonna have to give you a reason why he's questioning it if he just says we don't do it that way this is how we do it that shouldn't appeal to you or it shouldn't refer to you because you're not his student you're not from that club mm. but with respect you can say yeah i can see where, how you do it that's that's great and then you just continue to do it the way you do it unless you feel that his way is better and then you've learned something yeah. but question everything and but but you know be respectful and and kind of try to recognize what is useful and what isn't and mm. and but you've got to understand also i think it's fair to say and fair to protect you know uh, there there are people out there that have just started teaching or they've been asked to teach and they they haven't got a huge amount of experience they haven't got a huge amount of answers and so we've all been there we've all started there yeah. and um, and of course as people ask us more difficult questions it's great for us then to find someone to give us the answers but we sh sometimes just can't put the detail in that yeah. other people may be able to so if they have a much higher grade teacher than the club that they then visit um they've got to expect that kind of thing yeah um but like i say you know stick to what you do if you believe that what you do is the right way uh, and i think that's the easiest yeah, answer yeah if it's if it's if it makes if it's logical yeah so yeah. you know it's like you've got to have a logic to your physicality because yeah. or sorry uh, the, the other or the other alternative is make a video and send it to us <laughs> <laughs> see you're getting hang of these plug things that's it i remember yeah. going to a brown sash course and uh i uh, i i'm not going to say who it was but it was you know one of the guardians Mm -hmm. and you know respect but i'm doing a form i think it was like i'll look up kuhn or it might have been Thalen Chi. i'm doing a form and what you'll get obviously between different instructed schools and whatnot is do it like this do it like that oh that's wrong now mm -hmm. i don't mind someone saying to me who has got more experience than me no problem i don't mind them saying do it like this but it's mm -hmm. if they include a because i'm always interested in the because like yeah. i don't like just someone saying oh you're doing it wrong do it like this put your hand here so the and a great i and a great um a great example of that is at the start of phalum g you know are you slicing under the arm or are you pressing are you you know on the uh, on the inside block you know so it's the, mm. on you know and loads of people teach that differently and we'll talk about that in a bit but my point mm. is if you know and with the greatest of respect you've got to say to people as well just you know um I, you know thank you so much but and why am i doing this you know i, I don't think that's a reasonable question don't you steve well the, the more questions you ask the more they learn too yeah oh absolutely and if they're respectful back they will yeah. say well and then they'll, they'll know you're interested as yeah. well so they'll surely they'll give you more information yeah. if you just say you know oh, why do you do that like you just said uh, and they say because that's the right way and that's yes, it exactly. well that's yeah. not good enough yeah that's not good enough at all yeah no, um, so you know they if if they don't think that you want to learn from them then perhaps they shouldn't teach you yeah. but if they know that you are interested then they also teach themselves yeah. yeah not only the technique but they teach a little humility as well yeah right yeah. and that's short in, <laughs> in some instructors i'm telling you <laughs> oh hang on we've had the bitchy podcast do we want to go down that road again? Oh, i'm sorry I'm, yeah, we I'm, can i don't mind yeah. no no i don't mean to <laughs> be okay, bitchy no, i just no, I, know, I, I know but it's true you're i just i'm passionate I'm, yeah i know you are. i'm passionate listen if you're gonna do I, something bloody mm -hmm. do it right i mean you yeah. know that's how you define what's right is you know yeah. it, you know it's up to you but you know we have our reasons 
Yeah, you'll we'll have your this, reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think the important thing is that, you know, anything that we tell you, anything that we say to any listener or any inquirer about a particular technique, the reason we're telling you, we're going to give you the reason. It, then it's up to you whether you take that on board and agree with it. So if you see, like earlier you said, I, I'm doing a, a set in one of the YouTube things. I did the first set, demonstrate the first set. And they put a thumbs down or whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me. I, I know what I'm doing it for. And perhaps because my horse riding stance wasn't low enough. Maybe it's because I'm frigging 60 something and I'm finding, uh, you know, I sometimes find it hard. I got arthritis in my hips. You know, oh, we're coming out with all the excuses. I'm going to put like, shall I just put like, you know, Adagio for strings <laughs> in the background? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i could go on <laughs> you could yeah. no it's no it's just you know i mean we do have a saying you know when you're teaching someone and you show them something like difficult like a horse riding stance initially and you say remember i'm doing 60 year old kung fu you're doing 20 year old kung fu mm. so yours is going to be better yeah. and lower and stronger hopefully if you're a 20 year old doing a bad horse riding stance you've got no excuse Damn right. it's simple so you know um do what right. you can yeah that's it well i think that kind of in a roundabout way answers the question i I've can got... talk a good fight james oh, i can, you can. talk you a can, good fight man. Yeah. you can you can yeah. love it i've got a wild card question for you i just thought of oh. it yeah. <laughs> what's the martial application of spinning nunchucks <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You don't have to answer that one. I just rather the majority of nunchuck, the majority yeah. of nunchuck movements would bounce off the target <laughs> and hit you, right? So you know you got to be real careful. It wasn't a serious question, by the way. No, I know, I know. Right. I know. Uh, okay, right. So guys, we are. I'm, I'm cough mode. Just say something. Fill in the gap. Do you know what? <laughs> I was going to say. Do you know how to mute it? There you go. But, Muted. Um, done. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We, hopefully, guys, that kind of sheds light on some of uh, your questions. Um, right. Want to talk about the fifth set, finger movements of the dragon, Fei Lung Ji. Mm. Um, Steve, I'd like you to start it. Go for it. What do you know? What do you know, Steve? Well, you know where people say uh, this is an internal form and the, the other's an external form and all that kind of thing. It, it is done specific to, for, you know, slowly um, because of the spirit of the animal, I guess. Um, it also means you've got to put a lot more detail into it because you're doing it slowly. So when you see people do it slowly and then if they want to increase the speed, they better know how to do it fluidly. Mm. Because if you do it, you know, bit by bit, then you've not gained anything by doing it slowly. So, you know, if you're doing a form um, to the speed of your breath, and then you do it without that breath, you no longer have the control of the breath. Uh, when, I, when I say that, I mean the breath isn't now controlling the, um, the movement. Right. Uh, I, hey, hang on, I've got a cough. That's good. I, I'm going to learn how to. Hang on, I'm watching. Watch it. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Okay, hey, am I now, back? Now we heard you cough. What? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We didn't. It was good. You oh. <laughs> you worked technology, old man. I don't know. I know. Uh, yeah. It's a yes. miracle. Yeah, so, so as Fei Lung Chi is, yeah, finger movement of the dragon, there's an awful lot of movements in it. There are really, uh, there are excellent movements and you can see them in detail, yeah. Mm. But we were talking earlier about the beginning of it as people first move. Mm. So when they first take a step and they land on the heel and then on the toes, because that is your, the length of your gait. Yeah. And every time you step, that's how you should step. If you're going forwards, land on your heel, then allow the foot to go down mm -hmm. by the time the foot reaches the floor your movement is complete including your block or parry well, or whatever you intend to do it's an interesting opening to 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 for for yeah. a, for, for um for this set and the reason it is is because most of our blocks are on the uh outside out mm -hmm. uh, so inevitably you're closer to the target but this yeah. you're wiping uh, and blocking on the inside which by definition yeah. implies you're going to be closer to the target what, what's that about uh, 
It's a transfer of movement from one to the other because you're doing it on both sides. So you mm. do a step on one side with, with two blocks. Now, remember, it's a new thing at that point in time when you're using two blocks to do the same thing. But one's covering the top and one's covering the bottom. And it's a slice inwards and the palm at the underneath is upside down. Now, this is a really interesting point because there's gonna be a lot of people, especially the old guys who remember the old magazine, you know, the old um, a book, the syllabus book with photographs of Mastiao doing yeah. it, okay? And in the book, it's got his hand, his, his fingers are pointing out to the side because um, you know, underneath his elbow, right? Mm -hmm. And and in the, that's in the photograph. And the reason for that, because people will say, oh, but that's how it's done. Well, that has no martial application. It's the slicing using the edge of the hand, but just as the photograph is taken, he is changing and rotating it to turn to bring it into the next right hand block. So uh, people think, oh, no, Mastio does it like that. He slides down like that. Well, no, it doesn't. What it does is you'll slice sideways right. as, as in the first set yeah. when you do the last bit where you slice in and then roll out at the end. Yeah. So you slice in, roll out. It's exactly the same movement. And then, of course, because he's going from one left hand block, and a right hand down block mm. to a right hand up block and a left hand down block yeah, yeah. and yeah. at that point you're in time it, where he tra your microphone i am doing is going oh, no. oh no i oh, know i can't help you i'm sorry okay and yeah i'll keep my hands further yeah. away yeah and so yeah basically i've got a mirror right in front of it's, me and i'm just the thing I do is it every, though, yeah. i'm listening to you say it i'm following you i'm not sure yeah. whether or not it's you know that for people not you know, well, this is understand. why it's very difficult. Um, yeah, this yeah, is difficult I, I, to explain. So it's, um, it's hard to go podcast, through. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think you know, it, it is tough. Yeah. I believe me, I understand. Stephen. So I think let's. Let we, I mean, most of the time we tend to talk about where people. Or how we feel mm. where people are going in the wrong direction and and we're looking really at beginners that may not have particularly picked up what an instructor have said or where the instructor has less experience and maybe hasn't mm. picked it up himself yeah. hasn't had the opportunity to learn it so we're trying to help those kind of people yeah. i mean the people who already think they know it well you can't teach them you know what i mean their, their sure. glass is already full yeah. we don't need to worry about those kind of people if they they know it then good for you that's that's great you just go and do it yeah. what you're f listening to me for <laughs> okay did i you make sure you bleep that out all right i will <laughs> so okay. i was gonna say can can you give me uh, the reason why we we are blocking on the uh inside rather than we normally block on the outside with the hand at, at the start yeah that, that's a good that's because, a good point because but, yeah. you look at laugar look up coon or you know or hand block number one you're always blocking to the yep. outside meaning that that hand that palm up block tan sow or beauty yep. looks in the mirror whatever you want to call it is further out from your body whereas i want you at the yeah. start in, i'm just going to explain it whereas in failing yeah. g it's slightly closer to your body Okay, so yeah. go on, Steve. I, I want you to imagine that someone, you're just about to start the movement, and, and this is just an example, okay, mm -hmm. to get you thinking that someone actually is holding your left wrist when you do that block. So you are now rotating that left wrist and you've bent it, okay? Mm -hmm. And in bending your wrist, if someone's holding your wrist, their arm will bend to their hand their wrist will bend to mm. if you're hold, if they're holding your wrist and your wrist bends theirs will bend to so once you do that and you're rotating it around you're then using the other hand to you can slice it off or you can press it down and then you're going to move you're rotating your hand around you're going to go the other direction now you can press that hand down and then you can either spike in other words stroke with the fingers or you know parry yeah whatever's there so it, it's it's basically a combination i think a really important thing when you practice phalan chi is to get people to hold your wrists and see what you yeah. can do with those hands yeah. don't just think of it as a block don't just think of it as a parry think of it as someone has got both wrists or one wrist 
or the other wrist and as they're holding those wrists see what happens to their wrists when you perform your wrist movements yeah. Yeah. and that's really what that set helps I, with you, you you're absolutely I, I think you've you can see my notes here because I'm writing stuff down as we go and I was just gonna elaborate on that because as we know we've got you know strike block lock throw grab releases in the six applications yep. that every technique we do can, yep. can be um, yep. if we're smart enough to find it but one of the best ways when you're doing a set to sort of um, try and figure out you know what else could this be used for other than the bleeding obvious block or a strike which let's face it if you call something a block or a strike in a set most of the time that means you're not thinking hard enough about what you're doing now yeah. what it does you know I just have a joke with that but one of the best ways like you've just said is just to get people just just start with grabs on the wrist because yeah. you know understanding what you can do moving your anatomy around them is a great starting point before you start going into maybe some arm locks you know well you know throws, yeah. so. you know that people often suggest that fights end up on the floor okay yeah but they do start standing up and it, usually it, it, when one or two punches have been thrown the person tries to grab hold of you in order to prevent you from punching them or to try to get you on the floor so it's those movements that become useful to perform a transference of, of anatomy to enable you to take control of whatever's holding those arms or yeah. wrists or whatever so that's what you're doing with that you're at, you can actually move in and of course you are you're moving your footwork so you're very close and that's what creates I, the the spirit of that i got a story dragon i got a story about that you know you've oh, yeah, good. About, yeah um so i was at basic training catterick 2010 okay so we were everyone was outside on the field and the instructors all the corporals the screws they were really you know messing with us we were knackered tired they said right everyone's going to get in a circle and you're all going to fight but you're going to go down on your knees and it's going to be like a wrestling thing but you know no strikes mm -hmm. or whatever so i'm like oh for christ's sake i'm 25 years old do i really need to do this? anyway so get down you know blah, blah blah and the guy they paired me up with was quite a bit of a big heft a bit of a hefty guy and uh, first thing he did was he went to grab my arms now you're talking about all these rotations yeah my god he couldn't grab me because all i did was rotate out of it and almost trap him kneeling down and he was like oh and then you know but then because there was no finishing you know he would just let go and grab again and i just re did the same thing Cir rotate rotate and uh, yeah. afterwards uh, the corporals just all took the piss out of me and they just like, well, what's this still? What are you doing? Rotating your hands, you know, what they do? Like making windscreen wiper gestures with their wrists and that. And I'm just like, well, you laugh, but bloody hell. <laughs> didn't Kept you off the me. floor, didn't and, it? Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's funny, yeah. but you know, it's just, but again, you know, the rotations, yeah. you know, it's uh, Yeah, it's people, people do, you know, take the mickey out of what they don't understand oh I mean. because it looked looked you know it looked a bit yeah. weird you know it's but it fluid looked, it's yeah. yeah it's fluid yeah i mean I, I you know i take the mickey out of things i don't understand but I, oh, yeah. it, when it comes to martial arts i don't understand them because they're not working i don't understand how they work listen capoeira is fine i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, we, we're go, going back to the yeah this fluidness and this ability to uh, so this set is really performed with the movement of, of, of with the speed of the breath. So if you're breathing in, yeah. you're bringing the movements in. You're breathing out, you're bringing the movements out. So anyone who doesn't do tai chi, that's the kind of thing that tai chi would um, perform. That's the yeah. kind of and speed and the movements and so on. So and and it's. Go on. I was going to say a lot of people. They, I'm hijacking you here. People are paying no, to listen no, to you. Uh, and uh, they're not so, paying. I, I'm kidding. I'm joking. It's, it's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> finger movements of the dragon, right? So people might always think, oh, it's an internal set because it's the dragon, and you yeah, know, this we is, all know yeah. the friggin' dragon don't exist. You know, it's the yeah. one Shaolin animal that don't exist. So of course it's yeah. going to be, you know, internal, uh, internalized. I'm not saying you do it internally because as we've yeah. discussed on previous podcasts you know the, yeah. the, the 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 line between external and internal styles you know is blurred in in yeah. real chinese martial art you know it's neither one or the other because it's both yeah but but, but, but why 
Go on. I was going to say, talk to me about the dragon. Now, in all of the yeah. old sort of, uh, you know, paintings and, 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 you know, pictures of dragons, you know, mythical creatures, you see it's got finger movements of the dragon. And, you know, I hear a lot of people say, so a dragon's claw in this, and etc. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and you see in all the paintings of the dragon, the dragon is actually grabbing, unlike yeah. the tiger. The yeah, that's right. Grabs. People, people. Yeah, well, we did talk about the tiger before, and the tiger hasn't. It's it's got paws and and you know claws, but it hasn't got fingers, so it cannot grab. It does not grab, and so you can't. If you want to call it tiger style, you've, I'm afraid you got can't grab. It's as simple as that. You've just got to be, you know, batter people with your with your, you know, claw yeah. fingers. But the, the 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 idea of the dragon is it's um, when people refer to it as an internal style um the the difficulty there of course is that's really a western thing whether mm. they've as we've described before whether it's internal external when we talk about the dragon it's an energy that comes from nowhere so it's the development of energy from nowhere and that's really what the essence of this kind of style does so when you're you're moving these movements in like for instance if someone is holding you and you're rotating your arms a lot and creating these wrist movements to create the dragon if you want to call it dragon because you turn it around then as you turn it around of course it becomes a claw but in effect it becomes a grab because that's what the dragon is doing most of the time the dragon and there are many times dragon dragon <laughs> many times when the arms are going around where someone says got your wrist you rotate that hand round, turns into a claw but as you're bringing it round, it brings the person's hand the the assailant's hand to your other hand mm. so as you're rotating your arm you're literally the technique will bring the other person's uh, arm who's holding your arm to your other hand yeah. which allows you then to grab it with both hands yeah so it's 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 i can only do that in a description of yeah. uh, which i think i've done with john in america didn't i yeah did, you, uh, did you, you put that I, on I youtube you no i haven't done i haven't put that on youtube no no okay. i think it's probably worth doing a, a, a video on it but i can take a snippet yeah. from it and do it certainly yeah um you know again yeah. it's, that's hard to describe but most yeah, people think and, when they do the grab they're grabbing simultaneously with no they're not necessarily hands. because not necessarily. they're rotating it into yeah, a position yeah, yeah. so they're coming from, you know because both hands remember they're coming from one yeah. end of the body to the other you know one side of the body but what but the is other that? thing of course well i was just going to describe the the, the energy coming from nowhere is mm. if you're withdrawing your feet and then putting it into another place imagine um uh, someone who's doing wing chun if you're using a wing chun dummy they call it a wing chun dummy but everyone uses them yeah. um you've got your foot by the leg okay of the dummy on one side with your knee touching the knee and that's teaching you to prevent them allowing you to allowing them to kick yeah don't allow them to kick by feeling their knee with your knee or yeah. your leg and then you're gonna you can keep your knee against their knee but you can bring your foot inwards you know and rotate it around to the other side of the leg yeah okay and when you do that you may withdraw or you may stick to the leg whatever depends on what you're doing but you can withdraw in and then out and as you're going out that is when the creation of energy is applied so you're drawing back and then pushing out and there's a massive amount of energy you can exert there but it looks like you haven't moved okay yeah. your body hasn't moved but in actual fact you've you've taken yourself closer with your footwork and so you literally move barely any time or any any distance at all backwards your body barely moves at all yeah. but your legs move and you're able to reposition your legs and then push your energy your whole body in effect forwards onto that new stance into the position where the adversary is and that creates energy to push that adversity back so it looks like you haven't moved but suddenly it's an explosion of power and the the and the adversary gets pushed backwards right. quite yeah. quite uh, impressively actually yeah. and and that is what they're talking about when they talk about in you know the the dragon because it's a an, an energy that comes from nowhere right. okay it's a development of energy that you don't see Right. um and and that that really kind of explains the way that set is uh, performed yeah. uh, a lot of rotation a lot of um il 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 illusion 
yeah. and uh, illusion of power as well. So it, right. it is quite an interesting form. What, 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 in the old paintings, you see the dragon holding an orb. What's that orb? Or the it's pearl? the pearl. Sorry, it's the a pearl. pearl. Yeah. What's the yeah, pearl? If represent? he drops the pearl, he dies. It's, okay. It just represents right. uh, life yeah. or luck yeah. or whatever. Right. Um, the, the, the spirit of, of, the, uh, of the dragon. Yeah. You know, um, that's to my knowledge. I'm not. I'm not a. As you know, I'm not a. Yeah, a, but, but a great you, you, fan of. No, I, I know. In but that it's, sense, but it's it's equally important to to recognise where, yeah, where everything yeah. comes from. But you'll notice he doesn't have any wings, so he doesn't fly, and yet it comes out of the clouds. <laughs> so where's that come from? Dra dragons aren't real. Dragons don't exist, people. <laughs> King. Oh, wait a minute! Uh, didn't Saint George uh, uh, slay a dragon? Oh yeah. God! Yeah. Did he <laughs> King have a George, voice like Sean the... Connery. Yeah. No, because he was a, a big. Yeah. No, how oh, right that one? <laughs> no, no, King George was actually Turkish. Oh, right. So get you know where does that come, get off? And right. um, the dragon was uh, the uh, Halley's comet, by the way. Oh, okay. Just let you know. Right, going back on track. Because we can't be careful. We we do go off off the beaten path sometimes, oh, don't we? Eh? Gosh, yeah, we gotta, yeah. I've got to steer you back on sometimes, old we, man. Yeah, we need a script. We, we need a script. Yeah, nah, nah, it's fun without one. Um, okay. okay, so another uh, interesting point when people do, and I, you know, we're not going to cover every technique, obviously, but just main ones I see a lot of. So when people are raising up the both hands, okay, yeah. and almost raising their forearms. Um, level with yeah. their head sort of thing you know yeah um, wh what are they doing there and you do this t I think you do this twice in this form don't you but yeah those yeah, people do who've left, done it left and right we're talking about yeah. so, left and right so yeah you're raising uh, the hands up but if you imagine that hands are actually flat and people think you're pushing something up that's mm. no you're not pushing anything up you never use your hands like that to block what you're actually doing is as you pull those hands back you're tensioning just like many other parts of other forms you're tensioning those forearms and because you're able to tension those forearms you can use those forearms to great effect so and um, and of course if someone's punching for instance you raise those arms up you can raise one on the inside of the arm or one on the outside of the arm and so lock in the elbow yeah. so so that's one way of doing it if someone grabs your wrist and you raise your hand up like that the next move is what it's a spear yeah. so once you've you've raised your hand up like so you now turn twist it spear I, and it releases and spears him at yeah, the same time i think a lot of people will always interpret this oh i'm lifting up the arms to create an opening yeah. you know but but again what? What? oh no no Do you know what I mean? no you, no, you're I'm not, not saying because, that i'm not yeah saying i know that. I, I know i know you're not saying it i okay. know you're quote, <laughs> quoting them yeah the, the, I, I would slap you for that if you were to <laughs> say that because i didn't teach you like that no, I didn't. but but the, the the thing is james if if people did that their fingers would be in a massive risk yeah. A, a terrible risk yeah. fingers are a risky business anyway the only you can do kung fu without fingers all you can't do is it's grab yeah. and uh, and finger right. strike yeah. yeah so but the rest of it you can do without fingers um, so. another c contentious issue i see people do very very uh, uh, a lot of variations on the technique are the pressing palms and what I see a lot of, and it's double pressing palms we see uh, yeah. in this set, we yeah. see a lot of people either not pressing on the the, the same line, or mm -hmm. indeed they're not even bending their wrists to generate power. They're just literally, yeah. you know, tapping it down like you're patting a boy on the head, you know, good boy. And it's like, that's a massive uh, contentious yeah. issue with me. Yeah, it's, it's a very important form for wrist movement so there are there's a development of wrist by raising the wrist and then palming it down just the same when you do press ups on the wrists so that you are forming a, an ex extended stretch on the wrists that way and then when you do press ups on the palms you are doing extended stretch in that way so so by applying those together you you get a much stronger palm yeah. effect or palm strike and uh, and of course to do that 
palm strike you raise that wrist or rotate it out of an uh, to escape a, a grab and uh, but in that case when you're pressing them double down as you said one's in front of the other one striking at the knee one's striking at the shin or just above the shin you know just the top of the shin you can do it obviously closer if you want to so but remember the closer you are to the adversary the more effective the technique will be and the less effect the the adversary will have on you because if you're trying to press your palms down on a kick that's coming up at the foot end remember what you talked about a stick the end of the stick is the mm -hmm. most powerful yeah. well the most powerful part of your kick is is going to be the foot the slowest part of the kick is going to be the thigh the first thing to move and therefore the first thing you can react to is the thigh the best place to hit someone is the thigh because it's softer and it's slower so you have a much better effect I, and so it literally you're pressing down to block a yeah. kick i think a lot okay. of people you know you interpret it as both hands have to be striking the single leg when, and i say oh. well that's not true because the rear hand when you're doing the double pressing palm if it does strike you know what the leg it does yeah. but yeah, yeah, really yeah. it's the front the front hand that, that could be striking the rear hand yeah. is just there in case that foot sneaks yeah. past you know yeah um if if you if you hit the thigh first mm. and the leg is still there well yeah. you're going to be able to hit the shin anyway yeah. Yeah. but you are going to impact the thigh and bring the kick to a halt yeah. at the thigh because the, the the leg the foot can't go any higher than yeah. the thigh Absolutely. right because your knee joint doesn't work Unless that way you're stretch armstrong <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can do it yeah. i've seen him yeah but basically just look at um i mean hopefully that would make people's yeah. understand uh, the perception of um, number six and five kick blocks yeah. because they're exactly the same technique um, I, I i just want to talk about the stance involved in pressing those palms down because a lot of people mm. are either too too um too they lean low. forward or lean forward and they would get yeah. kicked in the groin anyway etc or he kicked on... in the face they'll yeah, get kicked in the yeah, face and lean sure, forward sure um, yeah so, I mean, depend on the strength of your legs, but if you yeah. can go backwards, you are you're basically sitting in a back stance. Yeah. Um, you don't have. To, I mean, a lot of people could have extend their leg out, don't they? Go yeah, right down on the straight, floor, and, it, and they can yeah. have a straight front leg and lean. Back yeah, they go right down on the floor. Remember what I told you the other week about about, about that uh, kung fu guy with where I said the uh, a guy got a, a certificate uh, <laughs> for an alsatian for his yeah. style. And I was fighting him, and he went right down low, like a dancer, really low on that leg. So I just stood on it. And well, there's your it. answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's what you would do with someone yeah. who did that. They're but, doing it for elaboration. Yeah, they're doing oh, it, yeah. if that's a word. They're doing it for form, uh, yeah. competitions and stuff. But, but if, not the correct way to do it. If no, it's a form way of doing it. But if you are going to do yeah. that, for God's sake, keep the back leg foot flat on the floor because so many people do yes. that. And they, they end up with their heel lifted up, and it just looks god damn ugly. Yeah. if you're gonna do it yeah make it look good people okay well yeah well if they do it, it well that means basically is anatomically they can't do it yeah. because what they're doing they're keeping the foot off the, the heel off the floor because if they put it on the floor they'd, they'd counterbalance and they'd fall yeah. backwards yeah. and 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 why why do you want to go down there and fall backwards or risk from backwards and when someone's kicking you with energy mm -hmm. you don't want to be down that low but of course people as i said people will do that in a form to make it you know to show their their um flexibility or whatever but yeah. in term it's the same with the uh what is it uh Bok Pai Jern. same thing people big elaborate movements uh, and they try to make them more and more elaborate because they copy these ex extended systems these extended forms that are from other martial arts and and i mean let's face it you look at the the the, the nationals today and you watch the forms barely anyone does Lau a, a laugar form and, and if they do they do it because they've just built up the courage to actually go and stand there and do a form never mind a laugar form they just yeah you know grateful to have the courage to go out there yeah, and demonstrate and so but but people always win because they just go through these long-winded tai chi sword tai chi yang forms or whatever oh, chin well, forms wushu. and uh oh, wushu yeah and then some um 
uh, weaponry or whatever which is so flimsy it's you know you can see it just spring around mm. um yeah they, they're following a tradition that isn't a tradition they're following a tradition that destroyed a tradition yeah. in other words they're they're following a wushu style that destroyed kung fu because they didn't want people training kung fu in china and you know they so they follow this thing that they believe to be oh just because it's chinese for some reason it's uh it's it's good no do a friggin kung fu one do a lao gar one do a lao gar form bring lao gar forms back yeah. make them good i mean when you do a lao gar form if you're gonna do it bitty and when i mean but what i mean by that is like move then stop then move then stop then you haven't practiced so what we really want you to do is to fluid straight through it fluid you know boom 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 fight the guy do it like you were fighting mm -hmm. as i said to you before yeah absolutely um <clears throat> well, i had i i was i was listening to you go off on a bitch then and i forgot what yeah. i was gonna say what was that wasn't say? a bitch that was just well all right observation encouragement we all know observation a that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> but bring lao Gar back guys at the nationals bring lao Gar back mm -hmm. um uh what was i gonna say da, 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 da. ah rotations in this form i'm not just talking about wrist rotations um, yeah. But there are some, you know, obvious rotations, and, and, and by that I mean every time someone says, "Oh, you're body rotations, ball, body rotations, yeah. hand rotation, yeah. arm yeah. rotation," but you see yeah. a lot of people that can say, "Oh, you're holding a ball and you're pushing out the ball," you know, all the rest of it. It's a chi ball. I heard that once. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But, but but I call it I call it a beach ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously on the wrong track. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, son of a beach son of a beach <laughs> all right you know <laughs> calm down listen this is why i'm going bold because all your jokes go over my head yeah um talk to talk uh, and we'll finish it we'll finish fade on you with that but please yeah. just talk a bit about the the rotations you're making in this form and the obvious ones and, and you know why they're important well I, it's really important that that you're you're rotating the spine you're not rotating rotating you know obviously the shoulders will go with the spine the arms will be rotated obviously uh, from the shoulders um but you're trying you're moving forwards and backwards as far as the legs are concerned um you know and so it, it's very important where do you put your feet before you create this rotation you know because which what you're doing effectively is rolling around to the back and then round back to the front again so it's a a, a rotation is a, is the hardest thing you can throw energy at or contain in other words the adversary cannot follow it with any strength because you have to keep changing your muscle groups in order to follow a rotation and and uh, i know people won't understand what we're talking but, but about it's not I, a I linear that. thing because exactly. by nature it's rotation yeah. so they so it's difficult is, yeah is is constantly changing when you're exactly when you're yes it's never Thanks, fixed yeah. that's all right yeah see that's i listen see that hey yeah <laughs> so that, yeah that's exactly right you you was, the force is i was, hope, is I was hoping the direction get of a compliment i was hoping i'd get a compliment but i never do hey no wait what? a minute wait a minute i said thanks <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's your compliment <laughs> all right i'm kidding i'm joking uh no don't do that i'll get big head right um go on sorry you were saying no that that's you, you you took the words out of my mouth that's exactly what you're you're writing the same that you know which is it's great uh you know rotation um is very difficult to follow with any kind of strength linear strength is easy if someone's pushing you you can pull them if someone's pulling you you can push them but if someone's rotating round, where do you apply your energy because they're not going to be in the same place anymore they're going to be turning yeah and so the rotation of the body is pulling back and then you may well step forward and there's that little subtle step that creates the energy puts you in front where you you don't look like you're in front because you're still leaning on your back leg but you're actually gone forwards with the other foot and now you're about to explode mm. so you're exploding energy forwards and that's what makes phalan chi interesting because it's a uh, that's what why it's called the dragon yeah because simply it is energy coming from nowhere so the rotation energy just it develops an ability to absorb energy mm. and then pacify it and 
and then um, explode with it. Yeah. What, uh, if you like, did, best did way this to describe set, it. Did this set ever change back when Mastia was adding sort of the right, uh, the left hand side? Yeah, that that changed. That's got a left hand side as well now, as you right. know. Right. So Fei Long G yeah. was originally a lot shorter. Obviously. Yeah, it was a lot shorter. It was because right you do repeat only. things right at the end, don't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, all the way through. Um, uh, so Lung is is dragon. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Um, Fei Lung. Fei Lung. Yeah. Okay. Um, at any parting comments on that set, Steve? Or no, no, I, I do. I, you know, people find it difficult to practice that set uh, well because it's slow, so they have to put a lot of detail into it. And it's a very easy set for for uh, instructors to see where the mistakes are. Yeah. Um, and and it's nothing wrong with making mistakes ever. Okay, what's important is that you improve on them, that you use them. You, if you don't make mistakes, you can't learn anything. But if you make mistakes, you've got to learn from them. Um, and so you you've just got to be fluid, and you've got to make you've got to understand that you have you do have wrists, okay. And a lot of people they do that set, and they they can barely move their wrists yeah. uh, because they can't they're trying to concentrate on what the next move is and so on. But make the move, you know, make the move with with all the flexibility of your ankles, your knees, your hips, yeah. uh, you know, your spine and your shoulders and your elbows and your wrists and your fingers. Mm okay Absolutely. and uh, and, uh, and the, the good thing is of course a dragon does grab a tiger doesn't there you go there you go so you know take note canada <laughs> for it is written <laughs> right i think we're gonna we're gonna stop there i think steve i mean we've yeah. uh, you know we've droned on a bit and uh, once again yeah. guys if you've got any questions that and you want more specificity by all means what send, <laughs> hey I'm, I, hey, I'm a presenter. I've got to know these big words. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know it existed. <laughs> um, if you need more specificity, you know, as to what we're talking about, please, you know, we can send you videos. Obviously, you know, we're not going to send you, you know, bloody, you know, uh, a three hour epic. But, you know, if it's short, sharp and to the point, we can mm. we can do our best. Likewise, if you can send us videos so we know exactly what you're talking about, that can yeah. uh, that can work. And uh, again, everyone's got a phone. It's just a matter yeah. of getting a guy to hold a phone and say, I do it this way. Yeah. I don't agree with you. Guys. And, but, and we can have a good you know, friend, friendly and, argument and, like and, that. And, and guys it, you need to understand we're not here saying this what we talk what we say is the gospel truth it's just another point of view and it's, it's so our important. point of view yeah. that's it yeah and it's so important to have have a different point uh, of view it's you know. just based on experience and uh, logic yeah. so yeah you know, and there but, may but, be other logical ways yeah absolutely yeah maybe yeah well ah uh, right so please guys send us messages send us all the rest of it blah blah, blah. Yeah. like us on youtube like us on facebook subscribe to us on podbean that would be a massive uh, favor to us just try and get up in the rankings as well what we're opposed to i think james is just illogical ways I uh, yeah say. yeah and yeah. that that's basically it we're not opposed to you know martial arts no. other martial arts we're opposed to illogical ways of doing yeah. martial arts yeah but we i also respect that you know you're you're always a beginner okay people have to start from the beginning so they're going to do it wrong yeah. but when they profess to be you know great and when they teach bad things yeah. saying they're great that's what really pisses me oh, off for real for real um i i just remembered we didn't answer the guy's question about books okay if we had any good books we could recommend so have you got anything off the top of your head that you were uh, i know you're I, probably I, not a book you know yeah i'm probably, not a book person and yeah. i've I, I think there. Hey, sure. I'm writing a book, that's so true. when 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 that's ready, I, it'll be available somewhere. Yeah. So, <laughs> guys, can I just say it is hot stuff? This book, it's very good. It's uh, it's very technical. I mean it, and it's one of the best books on, um, you know, martial art, let alone kung fu, that you'll probably ever. Find. Yeah, you you were quite shocked when I when I talked oh. to, told you about my book, and I send you a bit. Yeah, you were quite shocked, weren't you? You thought I, I didn't have that kind of intelligence. I, <laughs> <laughs> that is not true that you, you know that's said not you true. said i've never read a book like that before no yeah. okay so that's, that's what I meant. it's in well it's not of, dandy that's why yeah no but i've read my fair share 
of martial art books like a lot of people listening like you know I, I don't read them anymore because I'm 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 of the you opened the chasm within me so I I now no longer look for text other than referencing sort of names and maybe some you know tidbit information but all my learning comes from sort of within and, and from you and and obviously teaching other people but mm -hmm. I've read my fair share of martial art books and you know what you wrote what you put down is incredibly insightful about what kung fu should be and as you perceive it that's the, that's the that's the caveat but it's a very there's reason and there's logic behind everything you talk about and if mm -hmm. anyone was to read that and come up with an argument you know i would i you know i'd be uh, well amazed because what you talk is is it and i'm not just blowing smoke up your butt mr newbie but it it, it was an excellent book and so i i look forward to that and uh, a first edition maybe mm -hmm. hey <laughs> hey just signed saying. signed I, um, I just wish i'd have read uh, wrote harry, harry potter that's oh, all yeah well that's it but uh, did you ever go you had some books when you were uh, when you first started did you can you remember any of them yeah i just got that uh, history of philosophy and technique which i would never recommend to anyone because no, that's 1970s <laughs> um, kung fu though isn't it yeah yeah i do i and the rest of my books basically uh Bruce Lee books, self-defense, and that's Shi Sao, that kind of thing, yeah. uh, interested me. I've got his tale, which you can do, obviously. I've got a lot of weaponry books that mm. tell you the history of weaponry and, and so on, so I am interested in that. Uh, I've got the, uh, what, what really, probably one of my favorite books is the, is the uh, Art of War. Right. Yeah, that, okay. that's, you know, that's one that I really enjoy because it's, the tactics of war are identical to the tactics of you know a fight between two people mm -hmm. yeah uh, or a gang for that matter yeah you know. no it's fascinating yeah sun tzu mm. or someone said sun tzu <laughs> no, <laughs> no come on sun tzu um and it, sun tzu sun tzu. sun tzu is yeah art of war yeah um what uh, books that stood out for me because i've I, I had every single bruce lee book i think you know Taoji kundo all of his sayings of the dragon i had a bookshelf full of them i've packed them up now because i just didn't read them but uh I do, a good bruce lee book was uh, one of the first ones i got was uh uh bruce lee's fighting method that was one of the i, I got that was, one yeah yeah i think it was maybe his second book he wrote in america his first one was the uh was gung as in g gung yeah. fu the philosophical art of self-defense but mm. the second one was Bruce Lee's fighting method. And I think he had a series of four books and they were interesting. If only to sort of understand or open your eyes to sort of economy of, of striking and motion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he really went on a lot about that, which, and they were always good. Um, you know, again, if you're a seasoned practitioner, you're probably, you know, gonna, not gonna find it that interesting, but you know, who knows if you're that way inclined. I had another book that I really enjoyed um, it was a bit about, you know, uh, Shaolin Kung Fu. It was called uh, The Art of Shaolin Kung Fu uh, by Wong Q. Kit. And that's K-I-E-W, K-I-T. And all that was, it's, it's, you know, text heavy. There's a lot of illustrations as well, but it was pretty much a sort of introduction to a lot of different Shaolin styles. So, you know, you might, you might even, I haven't read it for a long time, but I remember it being good. You might even find Dragon Finger in there, who knows? Um, <laughs> another one. I've got, I got a few Tai Chi books. Yeah. As well. Oh yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and another good book I, I found, and I, I only do the two, but it's, a, it's called Analysis of Shaolin China by Yang, Dr. Yang Zhuang Ming. And that one's good. And I'll tell you why because if you're interested in breaking down uh, your forms, obviously, you know, you've got an instructor, you ask, you train, all the rest of it. But as a reference, a lot of these Chinna techniques, or Kung La, whatever you want to call it, you'll see patterns and, you know, you'll identify certain moves which you can interpret as, oh, that could be a move from Back by Jern or, or Fei Lung Ji or this, that, and the other. And, it's not a direct uh, application, but it's just to open your mind a bit to the physicality of the martial arts and just say, oh, I could interpret it that in that way, etc." So that was interesting. That's a, that's a good book, you know, um, but uh, obviously it doesn't, doesn't uh, substitute training guys and uh, 
really you mm -hmm. know putting the putting the hours in etc but but i don't i don't really recommend a lot of books to be honest but uh, you know mm. um, yeah and i do i do have to just add at the end because we did talk about this that how you know going back to the abc concept of big letters mm. by the time you've fin done phalon chi i mean when you become really good at it those rotations should be pretty much almost invisible yeah. to you know they are movements that will uh, at the moment when you learn a form all the movements are exaggerated when you master the form movements you know are barely are recognizable yeah but uh, guys you'll never master the form <laughs> sorry no <laughs> yeah that's true uh, right then old man we got a we got a oh one two one do one Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay well i've got to go and cook the dinner now i've got to i'm going to do a prawn uh chinese uh with you know garlic and onions and oh. all oh god we've run out of garlic oh. okay anyway but the prawns are bloody huge oh. so they're brilliant yeah excellent oh, I hope yeah, you enjoy tomorrow that. we're gonna have a barbecue oh, oh lovely excellent good stuff right guys thanks again for joining us on another episode of the kung fu podcast my name is james still and as ever i'm joined by my teacher mr steve newby and uh we'd like to thank you for sticking with us and uh, listening to us drone on thanks again guys yeah. take care yourself bye bye thank you say thank you chef thank you <laughs> <laughs> bye guys take care Your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also, guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns. How's that? That's much better, actually. Just just raise your voice. Biddy, 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 biddy. <laughs> Oh, what's up, Buck? Yeah. <laughs> You're fucked, Buck. Do you know his head looked like a penis? <laughs> it did. If you watch it back, his head looked just like uh, that.